we got a good one today asking about The Last of Us. Hey, John, this is Dennis from Nashville. I had a question. With The Last of Us, do you think that they made this show for the hardcore gamers that have played the game or for the newcomers like me? I'm loving the show. But the only negative feedback that I hear is from people that have played the game. What do you think? All right, Dennis, thanks a lot for calling that in. Um, yeah, well, again, look, Last of Us, we've been talking about it now for almost a month. The Last of Us is nothing short of an absolute triumph. It, it is incredible television. It has captured the imagination of gamers, non-gamers, people who know the game, people who don't know the game, the whole bit. I mean, everybody's just around. And week after week, we are seeing double-digit growth numbers every single episode. This is what the model of a successful television show looks like. And it just seems to be getting, getting its momentum really going. It's just been absolutely phenomenal. And it raises a good question because we've talked a lot during the run of The Last of Us about what does this say about the need or lack thereof for producers of a video game adaptation to stay true to the source material? Because while on one hand, The Last of Us is one of the most true to the source material adaptations we've ever seen, but at the same time, this is also a show that's taken tremendous liberties with the source material and changed a lot of things, things that all have made it <gasps> better. The, the changes they have made have all been made that actually have made this a better story than what it was originally conceived of in the game. It takes the incredible strong original, original story. As like Druckmann said in the post show once, he said, we figured if we can make it better, let's make it better. And we'll change the things that we need to change to make it. Episode three was like, they took a detail about the game, a true detail about the game, and then they expanded it into an entire episode, which ultimately became one of the greatest episodes of television I've ever seen. Dennis isn't wrong, though, when he says that the only time we hear any, you know, uh, bashing or not even not even bashing, but like any a lot of negative talk or any de negative talk around the show it tends to come from the people who've played the game. And I think, number one, you're right. But also, number two, I don't think that should surprise us. Because we as people, not just gamers and not just people who play the Last of Us game specifically, but we as individuals and people, we have something. I saw one study done about this once a number of years ago that I reference every once in a while, that we are plateauists in the sense that the person who did the study uses the term in the sense that whatever our first experiences with something, that sets the bar for us, right? It's not a coincidence that 80 plus percent of people who see a movie before they read the book think the movie was better. And people who read the books before they see the movie, over 80% of the, those people think the book was better because our first experience becomes our template, right? So... For people who go play a game first, right, who first play the game, it's under, it's human nature. It's natural. It's normal that that becomes the template. And anything that deviates from that template is met by us, and I say us because we've all done it, is met by, by us with initial resistance, right? I, that's fair to say because it's no longer exactly what I already love and therefore we have some initial resistance. So I think you're right. The only time I've heard any negative talk about Last of Us, and there hasn't been much, has generally been from people who really play the game a lot, know the game a lot. But I don't think that's unreasonable, and I don't think that's you know, unusual. Because I again, I think if you look at just about everything, that we as a species have shown a thing that once we have kind of a template in our head, anything that deviates from that template, even if it is better, we initially meet it with some resistance. So I agree. I think your observation is right, but I think it's a little bit understandable too. Rob, what do you think about that? Uh, this is interesting. I've never heard the term plateauist before, but I'm going to incorporate it into my worldview because I agree. Uh, I think something else that happens, when you're a gamer and you're playing a game like this, the center of that game is you. It's yeah, happening. Good point. It's happening yep. to you. So when you're rummaging through cabinets to find supplies or whatever you're doing, all of this is your, your experiencing it. I know you're only playing a video game, but man, 
when you play video games, any gamer knows that a great game is totally immersive. It becomes obsessive. You can't wait to sit down and play it again when you come home from work because you're, it's happening to you. And, and you're incorporating the emotional beats of it are because you made them happen. You know, and in the cut scenes in this particular game, you as Joel, or if you're playing his daughter or Ellie, whatever, you're emotionally involved. So in a way, it's an experience that you're having. So immediately, anybody who's a hardcore gamer that has been played, play this game, that experience of you by watching this show has it been removed. Mm. You being the central protagonist and the prime mover behind the game is is gone. So all you're left to do is go. That's not what happened to me. That's different than and 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 when you're not getting exact. Which by the way, you can't because you're not. This is going to happen in any adaptation for a video game because you're not playing. And so I really think psychologically, that's what people are responding to. And when something doesn't happen exactly like, you know, the Cordyceps mythology, the lore has been changed in this TV show. It's not I about think, spores anymore. Uh, you know, and I think it's for the better. And but what happened to the gas masks? You know, and I and why and I get it. I totally understand it. But what I would ask is that's where that's where a a an intelligent consumer of stories sits down and goes, okay, I'm looking at an adaptation. And and the joy of of great adaptations is to see how they've changed things. You know, and to see how they've wow, they've made the cordyceps uh threat better in this because we saw in episode two when they disturbed that vine and the cordyceps came running react we, to it, yeah. we have three minutes i mean suddenly it's like oh my god because in a game it might take you a, a, an hour or more to finish a level but in the tv show you don't have that for narrative time so you have the they're coming in three minutes we ever get the f out of dodge or we're all dead and so you create that narrative thrust. That's why this is such a great adaptation. But I think Dennis is very astute when he says that. And I think that we should expect that gamers would be the ones that have the most criticism because it's not affecting them the way it did when they first played it. And they have to kind of sit on the sidelines in a way and watch. So they, they, they bump on everything that's not exactly the same as their own experience already. In asking the general question that he does, though, is like, is this show, The Last of Us, made for the gamers or is it made... For those who are not gamers, the answer is yes, and 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 that's that's not a cop out to the answer because what I've said this before, I will say it again, and I think this is true when you're making adaptation of a book, of a comic book, of an old TV show, or of a video game. You want to be aware and be faithful to the spirit of what made and the elements that made the original story so good, but you cannot be beholden to it. And I just love what Drakman said. Look, we're going to make this game as faithful as possible. However, being faithful to the game is not our number one guiding principle. Our number one guiding principle is to make the best show possible overall. And so if we come up with things that improve upon it, we're going to improve upon it. And I think that's the, the right approach. I, I completely agree. And it's it, it drives me crazy when people go... You know, uh, I don't like Bella Ramsey because she doesn't look like the character in the game. And oh, I'm like, I know. That, but, but, I will but, never but, understand but, but that. Here's, I, it, it goes back to the same thing because the way Joel and, and Ellie look in the game, they have been designed to look as pleasing as possible to gamers. And, like, if you're playing Joel, you're going to fall in love with this character and the way this person looks is the way she looks. But she's a virtual video game character. No human being looks like either one of them. They look very photorealistic, but they're not human. And so in the translation, it's got to be different a little bit. So they went and found, you know what they did for this game? They found the best young actors. How many people do you think they probably auditioned for Ellie? Well, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say hundreds. Probably hundreds. And Bella Ramsey, I mean, we first saw her as little lady Mormont. She kicked ass. Yes, yeah, she did. And I mean, she was already on HBO's list of approved people because they liked her she comes in and she's knocking it out of the park she's playing ellie a little different than the ellie character was in the game a little bit more of a badass but she's also you saw in this last episode she's still a kid telling bad dad jokes you know and you still love her and the thing is she's not exactly nor would anybody be exact to the game because they're not humans in the game they're game characters all right guys Question is for you. What do you think about that? Uh, like Dennis is asking, do you think the game was made more for the gamers, more for the non-gamers? Uh, why do you think it? Have you observed that any times we have heard some criticism, it's been from exclusively from the gamer side? I don't know. Maybe your experience has been different. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.
We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia